What's going on, X community? X Stomp here, and today, people, we're going to be talking about the post draft power rankings uh, for the Laron division. And joining me, um, well, as per last time for the Agron division, is going to be Solo, who hopefully does not have a doubled voice this time. Hopefully, we we did we did double check before this, so if it's still like that, uh. Uh, blame well, Lexa. yeah, blame, wait, no, uh, I, Streamlabs, Streamlabs, okay, A anyways, so, first, let's go over, uh, <laughs> let's go over this real quick, so, we have three teams that are tied, may or may not be my fault, but we'll go over that later, <laughs> um, but, first team on the list is the San Jose Farfetched. So, um, we both put them 12th. I think we both have the same feelings about this. Uh, yeah. So, I don't know. I, there's a lot to add to this. Um, number one, I mean... Oh. Alright, did you want to say? They went all in on Trick Room. Well, hey. I mean, that's just the biggest problem. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, all in on Trick Room when there's, what, three Trick Room setters? So Yeah, you have the Slowbro, you can see in the Stack Attacka, and then you have three Abusers uh, with the Marowak, uh, Cursa, Stack Attacka, maybe a Surfetch, which has a little too much speed, unless you run, like, Room Service. <laughs> Oh, this is this is all over the place. Um, I I liked I liked the Uxi, the Surfetched. Um, the Alola Marag isn't bad in combination with like Galarian Slowbro. It's not bad, or just the Uxi in general. You could you have some some options there. Like the, I think I like half of this team, and then the other half are why did you pick them? I understand the the mascot pick, but in this team, it doesn't work. Uh, <laughs> Clam Pearl, albeit it's a good one pointer. Okay, you know what? I'll give it. I'll give you that. But uh, Cradley, I don't like. Um, if you have Bouffant and Surfetch, I really again, I really don't see the reason to have both. <sighs> it's all over the place. Kurt Crisola, uh, eh, eh, could do better, but. I don't know. Looking at the hazard removers, we do have um, two defoggers being uh, surfetched and farfetched. So uh, don't want to run it. <laughs> yeah, and this team isn't necessarily super weak to rocks. However, I mean, your Lola Marowak's not gonna be running heavy duty boots. Okay, if if it's running that, there's there's a problem. So you really don't want that to be chip too much uh but i don't know overall you know you have good rockers you have like most of your team is rockers so you know that's that's a plus um this i think you're gonna need to use like almost all of your uh your trades to make this a lot better uh what, what do you think here yeah, the, the big problem with the team is that if Trick Room isn't up, I don't see a way this team could win. Because after uh, Uxi, which probably doesn't doesn't want to run speed anyways, you go to 65. You know, that's your second highest. Probably your highest, because again, you're not running speed on Uxi. So I just don't see a way this team wins when Trick Room is not up. So it's going to be very difficult to them. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to the team that was tied with them, which was the San Francisco Solandits. Um, so, listen, all right. I don't like Ditto. Everyone, pretty much everyone knows this, but I don't like Ditto, uh, especially on this team. It just doesn't. It doesn't work. You're missing a lot. You're missing defensive pokemon we did talk about this uh in pickums if you guys missed that uh 
there'll be a video in the in the Discord. But um, you're missing a lot of your defensive mons. You don't have any real defensive mons actually in general. This is kind of hyper offense, but like not good hyper offense. Uh, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of problems uh, with it, and I think we all kind of agreed it's around 11th or 12th, uh, which is exactly where it is. And yeah, I, I think there's gonna need to be again at least three, maybe maybe four trades to kind of help out this team. I don't really see the Ponyard, the Ditto. Uh, I think the Golurk could be like Palisand or you know another Ghost ground type i don't know if rune is there or palisand you know either one uh i think you just need more defensive mons here i, I don't think this can work without more defensive mons um i mean if you want to stay offensive you don't really need defensive mons but you need something that could at least kind of take a hit better because right now your steel is pawn nord you usually want a little more bulky steel type even on an offensive team, you can get like a bulky offense steal. That's really good. Um, yeah, but just in general, even if it's offensive, it's not really threatening. Like Cloister, obviously, is a sweeper. I think that's like the most threatening. And then there's not really much. Breloom could be Swallow, could break on the special side, but Galvantula is not really going to break. Go looks kind of too slow. Unless you try to set it up. But again, that's probably not going to work every game. God will could break, but probably doesn't want to. Um, I don't know. It needs a lot of work. And they're two defoggers. I don't know if we said this, but they don't want to run defog or rapid spin. So that's also a problem. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's decent amount of problems with this. Uh... I do want to bring this one up. You, you don't have a grounded poison or a poison in general, and your steel type doesn't resist fairy. So fairy types completely destroy your team. Anything with moonblast or even even play rough, depending on. Uh, well, I mean, closer can take one, but uh, anything especially offensive that has a fairy move can kind of just click it constantly, and there's nothing you can really do about it. A lot. This this team is just weak to too many types. Like, too many too many mons can just click moves freely, and that's not what you want. Especially with mons like Cloister that want to set up on a Pokemon, but if it can't, if it doesn't have room to, there's what is it gonna do? <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Uh, let's move on to the next team here, which is the Gingerbread Gengars. So, the Gingerbread Gengars, um, are probably, uh, we did put them around, most of us put them around 10th, uh, actually, okay, yeah, can you just, can you start with this one? Because I actually, uh, cropped this wrong, so, give me one second. Yeah, sure. Um, the team, I don't know, just doesn't really look that good on paper. Like, it, what's your like best offensive mon here? Hitmonlee? And, you know, not really saying much. I do like the Slow King, the Mudsdale, the Copperjaw. I mean, pretty good on the defensive side. But that's kind of just it. I mean, this team really doesn't look like good together. So that's why I raid them uh, well. All right. Okay, I fixed it. I think. Um. All right. So. Yeah, I. I don't know if it if it can work well together. Personally, I don't think it's it's a bad team. I think it could. I think it could work. Um. The bigger issues for this team would. Would probably be um, offensive ghost types. Lipart isn't the best ghost resist here, and I mean, obviously you have Florgis and Mudsdale that can kind of bounce off of each other when it comes to uh, just 
defensively tanking stuff, but if it's like a Specs Mistrevious or uh or a banded I don't know, poltergeist, any mon in general, these mons aren't gonna wanna take a hit. These you don't have a really good ghost resist is what I'm trying to say. So that might be an issue, uh, because ghost is such a good typing. Uh, you might want to get a normal type. A normal type could definitely help out this team. Um, not yeah. sure what you swap out yet. Do uh, you have any anything to add to that? Um, maybe Haunter, get better. Maybe special attacker first. And then maybe... I think the lion part. I don't really see it. You, you need more offensive pressure. Okay. Hmm. I, I I kind of like the life part. Look, okay. I look at this team and I'm like, all right, you got two unburdened Pokemon, and then I immediately look for a terrain setter, and I don't see one, and that 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 might be an issue because like, if you have unburdened mons. They they strive with terrain because obviously with the uh, the grassy seeds and the the site whatever all the seeds they they just strive with it and without it I mean Lipard, prankster hitmonlee reckless like they they all work but you kind of want options and I guess you technically could run a burden on each and run different sets like normal gem but I don't know I can't. Whenever I draft an Unburdened Mon, if I don't have a terrain, I just I feel like I'm leaving something out here. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's about it. And uh, yeah, I guess we can move on here to the next team, which is the Swag Sosas. Uh, so the Swag Sosas, they are another team that's tied. So, yeah, we just talked about the, uh, what's it called? The 10th, and so now we're on the 9th slash 8th. So, I put them 4th. Uh, Lappers agreed with me, so I'm not the only one here, okay? Alright? Um, I... Yeah, why'd you put them 4th? You know why. Okay, well, I know why, but maybe say it in that <laughs> way that makes it sound, uh, good. <laughs> Um, well, okay, look, here. So, I like the combination of Scrafty, Agron, Golbat. I think they cover each other pretty well. Golbat and Agron especially. Um, obviously Golbat being, uh, can quad resist, uh, fighting and is immune to ground. It correlates really well with the Agron. The Scrafty, um... Obviously, is weak to Fairy, which Golbat and Agron take on. And then, if you look, Scrafty's weak against Fighting, and uh, so is Agron. So Golbat helps out that. So I kind of like that little core. Um, I also like the Coughing Pick, even though it's one point. It kind of also helps out the Agron with the same way that Golbat does. Might be an issue because you kind of want a a grounded poison since you already have a flying poison. Um, but I think the typings that were covered are covered very well. Uh, Chandelure for Alligator and Shaman, uh, very good Fire, Water, Grass core. Uh, you don't need a Dragon type on this team, honestly. It, it looks fine without it. You look like you cover enough uh, typings here. I love the Sand Slash pick. And uh, yeah, in my opinion, the thing that you could change to make it just a little bit better... Um, is get a grounded poison in the one point tier. Uh, there is one that we saw last season from Hopeless. Uh, Ivysaur is still in uh, one point, I believe. I don't think I moved it up because uh, it didn't really do anything last season. So it is a grounded poison. Even though you do have a grass type, it can still help out. It could make people maybe not bring toxic spikes just from seeing that. So yeah, that's an option. Yeah, my biggest problem with the team is that Except for Scrafty, it's kind of knockoff weak. Like, Golbat, Clefairy, Coughing, don't want to take a knockoff knock because then they'll lose their Eviolite, which really just 
you know, makes a defensive part of this team just really bad. Because, you know, that's really the backbone I'm really seeing from this. So, the team brings, like, a lot of knockoff, and they all lose their EV light, then this team could have problems taking hits. And, like you said, uh, why do you have two poisons that are neither of them are grounded? So, that was really my problem with the team. Yeah, that's that's definitely fair. Uh, yeah, I... I mean, there there are options for for knockoffs. I mean, you did say Scrafty, but like Agron can take a knockoff. Sandslash can take one. Um, I guess Shaman if it has to. Uh, but yeah, I I can I can see why you put them around the middle. And uh, what I can't understand is why DA put them at eleventh. I actually want to bring that up so I can see real quick why. Because I I can't I. I don't see a reason to put them 11th. Let me see. He says the uh, team doesn't have a lot of synergy and feels like each want to do their own thing. And that's it. Really? I, I mean, I just explained how much synergy they had. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I mean, all right. Maybe he's missing something that... Or I'm missing something that... Maybe we're both missing something. I don't know. <laughs> Um, we'll, we'll see how it performs, honestly. So, yeah, I, I should have started off with this, but guys, don't, don't take these so seriously. Uh, if, if we put you in 12th, you could end up winning the league. Uh, we saw that last season, um, in Drober, in Drober, Ozzy, although, albeit he did switch up his team after, uh, power rankings, but he was put in 12th. Uh, he came to me, he's like, hey, I saw the power rankings, I need some help uh, changing up my team. Helped him change up his team, he went 8-0, so yeah, it, it doesn't matter. If you guys do get put in 12th, and you guys do maybe want help with uh, changing up your team, we're, we're always here, we can always uh, help you out, so... Anyways, I think we talked about this team enough. Let's move on to the uh, well, eighth slash ninth again, which is the Washington State Whoopers Bench Masters team. So, another team you rank very highly, unlike everyone else. <sighs> all right, look, this is the, hmm. All right, I guess I'll start here because all right, look. So, has removers? They're not the worst. Cryogonal and Blastoise. They're not bad, okay? It could be it could be a little better, but you know what? Better than having one or none. So I'll I'll take it. That's fine. Uh good rockers. And you do have toxic spikes, that's fine. That's I mean, as long as you have a decent amount of rocks, you're okay. Clerics, you have technically a wish blaster, fine. You have heal bellers, okay. You have pivot, okay, sure, good. Um I know the problem. The problem that people have is that they see a lot of ground weakness and i do agree it is weak to ground but i also see thwacky and thwacky thwacky obviously has grassy terrain which weakens earthquake now if we talk about earth power that's a different story but um i don't know i i just i like it i think the team can work off each other very well um I do like how Diancie and Thwacky kind of synergize here, as well as Blastoise. Those three, uh, in the middle, well, on the middle bottom, uh, synergize pretty well together. Thwacky, once it sets up grassy terrain, obviously terrain pulse works well. Blastoise has terrain pulse. Uh, it's not obviously gonna get boosted because of, you know, uh, it's not mega, but that's okay. Terrain pulse is still pretty good. You can hit, um, stuff like Seismitoad pretty hard. Uh, Diancie as well has Terrain Pulse, can hit, uh, well, Mons that want to switch in, obviously, is stuff like Seismitoad again, Swampert, uh, any of the water grounds that are littered in low tier, it can now hit harder. Uh, so, there's a lot of options. I like the Fairy Dragon Steel Core, again, even though it's weak to ground, the Thwacky helps it out a lot, uh, and I don't know, I, I like the value picks too. I, I think all these mons have a role and 
I like it. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, one thing I didn't realize the first time with the team was that the Cryogonal um, does have Levitate. Mm -hmm. So, Thwacky isn't the only uh, ground resist. Yeah. However, they both share a weakness to fire. So, you have a gr so, if you have a ground type like Flygon that has fire coverage, then they don't even need to press a ground move. They could probably just do a pre uh, predict, press a fire move, and then, you know, they'll take a lot of damage, and then they can't really switch it next time. So, having those two really be your only uh, answer for any ground type moves on a very ground weak team, I think it's going to cause a lot of trouble and a lot of matches. So, I think this team needs to prioritize on either removing one of the ground weaknesses and getting another resist or immunity. Probably the flying type. Yeah, I, I can definitely agree with that. Um, another thing I do want to say is sometimes uh, a lot of people overlook the fact that if, if it resists a move it counts more. Uh, I think I said that wrong. But Persian. Persian, uh, if it's defensive, can easily take like uh, physical ground moves. Uh, Mill tank can take both if it's tanky, uh, fire and the ground moves. Uh, Blastoise, again, if it's tanky, can take both. So there are other options besides resist and immunities here that can come into play. Uh I don't know. I, I put them second. I, I I like it. I really cannot wait to see what Benchmaster can do with this team. Um, but yeah, I will admit a flying type will drastically help out this team if you're able to uh, to figure out what you'd switch on this team. Yeah, the only thing is like even though like, like you said, you could have the milk take Persian kind of take those moves you're still kind of forced to bring like Thwacky like every week just to like make up for that because it's just, it's just too apparent on this team. Yeah, I guess that's fair. All right, uh, let's move on here, which is my first place team, which is the Queensland Quagsires. Woo! Uh, apparently I'm out of nowhere because everyone else put them eighth, ninth, or seventh. So, yeah, well, why are they first? Oh, uh, you see, um, so basically what I did was, uh, I looked. Okay, all right. Well, let me start here. Let me start here. So, from first to tenth, I liked basically all the teams. Okay, Laron was was the hardest to rank because. I feel like everyone had a team that works efficiently. Next, on the on that note, uh, there's a lot of colors on this team. All right, look, look, we got purple, we got green, there we got is. red. I mean, damn, this this is the whole color of the rainbow. Roy G. Biv, like, wow, it's crazy. That's it. That's all I'm gonna say about this team. That's it. That's right. <laughs> Okay, all right. It's colorful. <laughs> all right. Also, um, this team also works really well with pivoting into Entei. Uh, it works really well with Entei in general. You got the the sticky webs for with Orbital. You got the hazard setting with Whirlipede. You got uh, Vaporeon, which can wisp, which can wisp that wish pass into Entei. Also, uh, can get the maybe some grass types out while you flip turn out into Entei. Then they have to switch back out on a Sacred Fire or whatever. It's it's a good team to help out the 19-pointer that Quagsires has picked, uh, especially even with Whimsicott Tailwind. You can go Tailwind and you turn out and go into your Choice Bandit Entei, and then again, there's just what switches in. There's nothing really that, that wants to switch into Entei. So I like it. It has a lot of options. Um, I can see the reasons of why it wouldn't be first. Uh, which is, there's not too much offense other than like Entei on this team. 
But I think Entei will carry this team 100%. I, I don't know if it'll be, if it is first still in my eyes, but I do, oh man, I, I do like how it supports Entei. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I agree this team does a great job in supporting Entei, but the thing is, it's really only up to Entei to carry this team. Like, again, what you said, there's really no offensive pressure. Rotom fans are like your highest special attacker, which is kind of bad. And then, so, it, it, every single match is going to really be up to Entei to kind of break through the other teams. So, that's kind of why I have it ranked low, and probably is same reason why other people did because it just relies on Entei way too much yeah that's yeah that's fair um I do like the speed tiers also I did want to mention that the speed tiers are very very good there's no huge gaps um which is quite impressive uh the, the biggest gap is 12 points from Perugly to uh, Entei, which isn't bad at all. So, yeah, the speed tiers are also good. I don't know. I, I think there's some options. Um, there's some offensive options, like Swordsdance, Doublade, or, or Setup, or Beetle, or Rock Polish, Weakness Policy, Dauntman. I don't know. Swordsdance, Absol. Like, there's some options. Nasty Plot, Rodent Fan, and, and Crobat, and... I mean, hey, it's not the worst team, and no one said it was the worst, obviously, from the individual ranks. I think I just looked at it, and I'm like, I like these colors, so I, I put it here, but, yeah. Uh, Alright. <laughs> Let's move on here with the 6th place team, slash 5th, they, they were tied. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's... Daddy's Dark Types, DDA's team. Um, I would start with one remover. You know, you start here, and then I'll, I'll go because I've been starting. Yeah, I like this team, like how it looks a lot. But like when you go into like, you know, the important stuff like hatch removers, pivot clerics, that's really where the team is lacking. Like Manton's the only remover. Uh, Slurpuff is only Mon with Wish, and it also has like sticky webs, and you're really versatile, but then you're stuck between only having it do one thing. Like, let's say you choose to bring an uh, offensive Slurpuff, then you're missing out on a Mon to Wish pass. Mm -hmm. Um, you have the Incineroar and only to Toxtricity to Pivot, which... Isn't bad, but you would probably want at least one or two more. But other than that, I like the rest of the team. I think they all work well together. Yeah, yeah. I think I think the biggest thing for this team uh, is it definitely it definitely supports each other well. Uh, Toxtricity Bronzong is a very good combination. They definitely support each other. Incineroar, uh, well, it is immune to Psychic, which can help Toxtricity as well as the Verizion, which is nice. Um, I just, yeah, you, you already mentioned the Hazard Remover being Mantine. I don't even like Mantine to begin with, so I just, I see it as the only Defogger. And I don't know. It, it's not. It's not the worst thing. It, it's not the worst thing because there's not a lot of Pokemon here that aren't running heavy duty boots that are weak to rocks. Uh, Incineroar pretty much always runs heavy duty boots unless it needs to run EV for something. Uh, Frostlass can run Sash, but it, it's been running heavy duty boots uh, for at least ladder. So other than that, and Mantine. Other than that. Nothing really cares that much about being weakened by rocks. So, again, that's not the biggest thing here. Uh, but, I don't know. I, I don't like how there's not a lot of pivot. Pivot's not the biggest thing ever. But when you have a few passive mons or a few mons that really don't do much in terms of offense, like 
Bronzong, Mantine, uh, Santa Cana, depending on the set, you don't want them to be setup fodder because if a team sets up on you and rocks are up because they probably will be out because you might not be able to go into Mantine in time, uh, it might be GG. So, I don't know. I Again, I had a hard time ranking from 1st to 10th, but out of all the teams that I did rank through that rank, this one was one that I think had the biggest issue, which was the pivot, the hazard, remover, the hazard removers, and probably the biggest thing, the speed tiers. Very low, from 108 to 82 dropping. That's that's huge. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Uh, I guess let's move on here to Johto Journeys. Would you look at that? The uh, the yeah. other power rankers are tied. <laughs> uh, before we uh, start, I just want to say that me and Epics, when we did our power ranking power rankings, we did them while Laren was still doing uh, in their grace period. Oh, yeah. And originally we had this team. I think we both had them second, but then. Towards the end of the grace, they made transactions which we didn't like, and we ended up dropping them to uh, fourth and third. Hmm. Which is uh, it's not not very good, not very good. Um, the combination. Yeah. Um, oh, what? What's up? You, there you go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the combination of the comfy zygarde 10 we saw last season with uh epic infernape uh and empoleon i think he had all th did he have all three i think he no he didn't have um i can't remember uh, he may have had empoleon too so he may have had that exact core uh and we saw it work out very well once you have that core you basically have enough to do whatever you want you have your ground you have your water and you have your fairy dragon steel, so at that point, filling in your cores are going to be very easy. And I think, uh, I think they did a really good job of doing that. They have a grounded poison. They don't. They don't have too many huge, big weaknesses that I can see at least. Besides the hazard setter being just Empoleon, I think that's probably the biggest issue here. Yeah, so like as I was saying before, like he used to have a Viper Volt in Serena, and they ended up dropping it for Otamo, along with a couple other mons, but they aren't really relevant. Um, yeah, I just feel like the Viper Volt in the Serena was a lot better than a Rotamo, because like it gave you webs, and just an overall stronger mons, in my opinion. Um, other than that, though, I really like the team. I feel like they work well. And obviously the speed tiers are really good. Yeah, the speed tiers, uh, if you're top three out, out speed, most of the mons uh, in low tier, which are basically base 100 and above, you're set. And all three do. Ninja is actually a very underrated uh, Pokemon because now that it has dual wing beat, it doesn't need to worry about uh, losing its item. And using acrobatics so it's definitely underrated um and i i actually really want to see it do something this season so i can't wait to watch that uh i did put them seventh uh prob i have to look back but i believe it's specifically for only having one rocker and i don't know it it's it's a fine rocker but I don't know. I, I don't think you, you're going to want to bring it every single game, but I guess we'll just see. <sighs> but, yeah. Let's move on here. We got the fourth place. We got Noisy Noivern. So, they did very well drafting. In my opinion, I did put them eighth. Uh, everyone put them a little higher, but... Um, I do like the, what was it? I had something in mind. I can't remember what it was. Uh, uh, 
Um, one thing I didn't like is I feel like their defense is very exploitable to sub. I mean, Umbreon, you know, don't really only really passes Toxic, maybe foul play. Uh, Klepke also just you know does status moves. Appleton probably you know once like Leech Seed. I mean, it could probably constantly break your sub, but depends on the typing. Same with Paul Sand. But I feel like that was like one of the problems I had with the team. But other than that, I like the Blaziken, I like the Inteleon, I like the NDD. And, but again, the team might have to rely on the defensive mons. So, that was just overall what I thought. And the hazards aren't great. You only have your policy and your only rocker, Klepki. It's only uh, spikes. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, yeah, I mean, for being 12th pick, which is last, having wheel, uh, it's not the worst. Um, Blaziken's definitely a strong pick. Ndidi... I don't know how I feel about NDD on this team specifically, but uh, I guess it's not, it's not it's not the worst. I just I feel like this team is a little awkward. I can't put my finger on it specifically. I think it has strong offenses. Um, its defenses aren't bad. I I really I can't figure out why. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna look. Um, mm -hmm. let's see. So I put them eighth. Uh, Team Lax has a setter. This Palisand and Klefki are good, though. Honestly, I'm not completely sure where to go with this team. Yeah, because I was. I really have no idea how I feel about it. The defensive Pokemon such as Umbreon, Klefki, and Appleton are very weak to sub. Yeah. Uh, on paper. I love the scene, but I'm not sure if it can go any higher in my eyes. So, basically, what you said, um, not much to add here. I just put them a little lower than what you put them. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. Third place, we got the California Q fans. Wow. Okay. So, Tweet. Tweet, you, you made a, a very good team this time around. Definitely a lot better than last time. I'm pretty sure you... You may have, I feel like you may have been bottom three in the post draft PRs. Uh, but this time, man, you're top three. So props to you. Uh, I don't know why I exactly put you sixth. I'm going to have to look at that again. But, oh, I think I remember a few things. But um, this team does a lot of things right. Uh, what I do like is the uh was it the fire water grass core fire water grass core is very strong um chestnut gastrodon charizard they work off each other pretty well uh not a perfect core but the charizard gastrodon core uh just it, it's the same thing as moultrie swamper like what i'm doing uh they don't have pivot but it's not a big deal you're still covering the same typing so that's really good uh you have um, decent hazard removers. <sighs> Your hazard removers are offensive mainly, so that might be an issue. More Pico isn't bad as a rep spinner, but yeah, uh, hazard setters aren't bad. Uh, Doug Trio, Gigalith, and Chestnut. No wish passers, which could help out this team, but not the biggest deal. Um, but mainly, mainly, I think the issue that I had here was that. Both of your flying types are quad weak to rock, which can be a problem. Um, I said, I'm not going to nitpick. Okay, yeah, that's what I was going to say. So, from 97 to 80, speed tier isn't the worst. 17 points is, I mean, that's fine. And then you go 64 down to 39 and that's that's also kind of bad uh but 
those are your defensive Pokemon, so I guess it doesn't matter too much. Uh, oh, the last thing I wanted to say. Sand. Sand hurts Reggie Drago. If it wants to spam Dragon Energy, you're not going to want to take that chip. So that could be another issue that um, did drag you down a little bit in my eyes. Uh, you might want another Dragon type. But other than that, I very much like this team. And uh, yeah, that's where, that's where I'm going to leave it off. Yeah, I really like the sand. And that's part of the reason why I ranked it higher. I just like, because it's not full sand. But... So, like, it gives him the, like, so he doesn't need to bring it every single game. Like, he can bring it really whenever he wants, but the other team will always have to prep for it. Mm. Like, unlike the, like, the Trick Room teams we saw before, like, that's only Trick Room. This, he can still run a regular team and then bring Sand whenever he wants. So, I like having that versatility. So, um, and you did bring up a good point with Reggie Draco. Like, if you're running Dragon Energy, the Sand Chip will just keep me making me move weaker. However, it won't really weaken it that much. It's only like 6% a turn. So, maybe in the long game it will, but I don't think it's much of a problem. Um, other than that, I really like the rest of the team. Like you said, the Firewire Grass Core is really good here. Um... Maybe uh, need uh actually no. I, I like the rest of the team. You pretty much said everything else. Alright, fair. Um Yeah, alright. Let's go on to the next one then. Uh second place we got Toronto Typhlosions, Phoenix. Um very colorful team, so obviously I gotta put it at least top three. Uh, <laughs> but there is one glaring issue here, uh, that I think we both th see, and I believe I also mentioned in Pickums, Floatzel being your only water type is not very good for those, uh, offensive water types, such as Inteleon, uh, that can set up on you and kind of just click Ice Beam and, uh, hydro pump and just completely destroy your team it's you want a defensive water type I, I think what you could probably do um is take floatzel maybe even pichu uh and either upgrade to a defensive water type uh actually yeah that's probably what you should do um because that's really your your only the only the biggest issue here because Floatzel, I feel like, isn't needed. You have the speed tier already with Sneasel. And I don't know. I, I just I feel like it doesn't fit. It's it's a fun Pokemon to use when you have another water type, but when you and that's your only water type, it's it it doesn't work very well. Yeah. Uh for me there isn't really anything else that's really bad about the team maybe except the pichu i mean i mean i don't know why it's there <laughs> but other than that i mean i don't really see a problem with the team like, i just like everything about it okay yeah i i, I don't really have much to say I, I like the team yeah that's that's fair it's it's not a bad team at all um but that that's the only gripe to be honest i think if you change that, it could easily be second or, or first. Uh, well, you're already second. second. Well, yeah. I, I meant in my individual rank. But, yeah, you, you may, have, may be first. Um, but we'll go over the next team right now. So, the next team here, Miami Mimikyu's. I ranked them fifth. Everyone else ranked them first and second. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, why are they uh, fifth XO? Oh, okay. Well... Let, let me let me look at my notes here. The only problem I have with this team is the lack of pivot for your Heracross, as well as I feel like Carcold doesn't fit your team. You have all the hazards uh, without it, and 
you have a better hazard remover in Moltres that is also weak to the same thing, being uh, rock and water and whatnot. Uh, if you picked up Karkle for the hazard removal or hazards, I would suggest maybe uh, switching it out for... Uh, I said Carnivine in that three-point tier. But you do have Roserade. I think Carnivine still wouldn't be bad because it would help out your ground weakness here. Ground weakness isn't the worst, I guess, so maybe not. But um, Carkle is a big thing. I don't see a reason to have Carkle. I think you should have a hazard remover that isn't weak to the same thing that Moltres is. Yeah, I mean, Moltres is immune to ground, but ground types have rock moves, so... And they have stealth rock, so it's kind of going to be hard to get rid of hazards like that. Um... That's a big gripe with me. I, I don't see Karkle doing much here. Uh, and yeah, again, the lack of pivot for your Heracross. Your Heracross, fighting types, strong fighting types like Surfish, Heracross, Machamp, they love pivot because if you can pivot out and go into Machamp on a defensive Pokemon or whatever, they're going to be losing a Pokemon. If you have to physically switch your Heracross into Pokemon, you may lose your Heracross. So, yeah, that's those two things are probably the biggest thing. The has removers and the, the pivot is, is big for me. Yeah, um, like I said, Moltres is really the only good removal here that probably can actually come to every game. But they have a lot of Hazard Setters, like Arachnids web don't even show up that they have so many. <laughs> yeah. Um that was, yeah, that's true. And hair <laughs> yeah. And hair crossing webs is also just really good. Like you only need to run like scarf. You just run guts and still have that speed advantage. And I feel like it's also supported well. Like you have Moltres ready steel to kinda of take its weaknesses. So you know, for those reasons I really at first. I just think they work really well. Like, everything's threatening here. I mean, like you said, more pivot would be nice. But I still just really like the team. Yeah. Uh, let me actually see what's on the board. Because I think Karkle's three points, so... Um, let's see. Uh... Imaga has both pivot and hazard removing abilities. Uh, it may also, I don't know this, just guessing, it may have electric terrain as well to set up for your Alolan Raichu. So that could be an option. Imaga has both the pivot and the hazard removing options. Um, Pidgeot has both as well. Uh, War Turtle. Those both as well. So there's, there's a few options in three points that you can kind of cover up your pivot and hazard removing uh, problems. It probably wouldn't be enough because they are still three pointers, but it's something that the opponent will have to prep for a little bit more than, say, a Karkle and a Moltres that they can just put onto the same mod. Like they, they look at Moltres and Karkle and they can just run a water or a rock move whereas if it's a war turtle and a Moltres, they i mean they, they can run uh an electric move but it's gonna be a lot harder to cover uh to cover those weaknesses but anyways um that's it for the laron power rankings um aaron should be coming out pretty much right after this video goes up so yeah that's it um we will be obviously um putting this up as soon as possible so yeah if you guys enjoyed uh please leave a like and if you didn't like it leave a dislike let me know uh put a comment saying why you disliked it or liked it you know anything is helpful because uh if i can improve for you guys that would be awesome but yeah we're going to exit stage left here, and uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next time.
Peace.